I have, <laughs> I am going live because my, my smart, the smartphone I use doesn't seem to be working for the camera. I just listened to Jean, Professor Jean Brimont. Um, and, um, Hello, how are you doing? I want to discuss Professor Jean Brimon. He just gave a talk. I will post the link somewhere. I'll post the link in a second here. And, but I didn't realize he has a brand new book out on, um, I lost somebody there. He has a brand new book out on um, statistical mechanics, which, sound you know it's like nobody wants to study statistical mechanics but he's talking about the inequality or the equilibrium principle in terms of born's rule in quantum physics and um yeah it sounds really let me let me post the link since nobody's watching me or listening <laughs> which is totally fine with me I'm just trying to get this. I'm trying to get this out here. Okay, it's on the things. It's on the things itself channel. I'm looking it up here. Just hold on. And here we go. Jean Brimon. Okay. This is in business is now are not as dramatic as they used to be. But uh they don't bother to try to really there's the link this is what i'm discussing maybe this maybe that you see and and because they don't think it through the students don't know can you hear them I, I think i say in my book that there should be at least three things totally contrary okay to them, it's a really great talk but if you try to measure the benefit. um and i especially like when he talks about the stern gerlach experiment and that reminded me of um what basil j Hiley said he it's weird because he doesn't mention basil j Hiley. he doesn't reference him <clears throat> in his book i have his book here jean brimon hello say hi whoever you are i'm discussing quantum physics professor jean brimon's recent talk that i just posted the link to and i want to talk about his mention of the equilibrium principle and i didn't realize he just came out with a new book on statistical mechanics last year which is i mean who would want to read that right it's but the whole thing is that he's saying that you are forced to use statistics in quantum physics because of the equilibrium principle when in but when in fact life life is there is in in equilibrium unequilibrium and so so then he says you know you have to use born's rule and this is what his statistical mechanics book is about i'll get a he's so in other words if you have to in order to make a measurement you have to assume there's a box that you can contain a particle in at zero velocity velocity with the rest energy and so when you contain a particle in this you know box to make a measurement you have to assume equilibrium which is the symmetric rest frame and that's why you're required to use the statistics of quantum physics with the born rule hello i'm talking about quantum physics so anybody whoever's out there please say hi in the chat and I'm discussing Professor Jean Brimont because he's totally against the paranormal, right? And I've corresponded with him. And he had, he's also, he's a, he's a leftist too. He has a, he likes Noam Chomsky and all this. But the thing is, is like, he had, he had a book out about, you know, the postmodernists misusing quantum physics, which is great, but he doesn't talk about non-commutativity he doesn't cite um professor basil j Hiley. he he's 
uh, Professor Jean Brumont. He's promoting Bohmian, David Bohm, Bohmian physics. Hello, please say hi. Who do we have here today? <laughs> we got three people listening. I'm discussing Jean Brimon's, um quantum sense and nonsense, his whole philosophy of science. And he has a brand new book out on statistical mechanics. And this is what my next book is about, is the entropy and the uh, ecological crisis. And he doesn't mention the ecological crisis at all. And so I posted a comment on the video, his recent video. Hey, how are you doing, Nathan? So <laughs> I'm just getting this out here because my camera doesn't, my the smartphone I use, the camera's not working. I don't know why. Maybe it needs to update or something. So I'm just going live to <clears throat> get this out onto the interwebs. In the, the, you know, I've corresponded with Professor Jean Brimont. And the, what's really wild about him is, him is he he debunks quantum field theory. And if according to the interwebs and YouTube, you know, it's all about like everything's quantum field theory. But he says, you know, if you properly understand Bell's inequality, then you realize that the truth of reality is non-locality. And non-locality means that not only is is it indeterministic, but that there's that there is a there is a, a guiding field that's interacting, but it's not a symmetric rest frame. And yet, in order for us to make a measurement, we have to assume a equilibrium of of um, entropy for the statistics. And this is what his new book is about. Is so it's a really kind of abstract concept are you are you with me at all nathan i'm not trying to force you to listen to this so <laughs> who else is out there we got two people but okay so my point is is he jean brimon he totally rejects the eastern the paranormal and all this but the thing is is that if he if he talked about non-commutativity like professor basil j highly does per, Professor Basil J. Hiley, he acknowledges that the paranormal could very easily exist and be real because of non-commutativity. And the thing about non-commutativity is you can it resonates into the macro scale. And so when when um Professor Jean Brimon, he's talking about the Stern Gerlach experiment. So how you can have zero magnetic field, and yet you can have the spin that has an indeterministic non-local. Um, in uh, torque, and this is what Basil J. Hiley's whole point is: if you use Bohmian mechanics, it's not an instantaneous quantum leap, but there's actually a trajectory of a non-local quantum potential of the torque that would be like the future and the past overlapping. And it, and um, I I looked up um, Professor Hiley's paper on this about the Stern Gerlach experiment. I Amazingly, I had not read that paper before. That was very strange because it's a 2018 paper. And I, I thought I had read most of Basel, Basel J. Hiley's papers. Okay. Well, feel free to chime in, Nathan. Any questions or comments? I'm just commenting about um, my next book is going to be about the ecological crisis and entropy, which is entropy is really statistics. And, and, um, I've never, you know, the st statistics, it's based on the equilibrium principle. But um, I posted in the comments of this recent Jean Brimon talk on YouTube, how um, actually he, uh, the person who, the person who has that YouTube channel, they should check out uh, Alain Kahn. Alain Kahn's talk to physicists about the origin of quantum randomness is actually from non-commutativity. And if you understand non-commutativity, then you realize it's actually not random, but it's only due to our um, limitation of observation. So in other words, whenever we make a measurement, we're actually having a, an, a, an external observation. But in meditation, we don't have to make an, an external observation. And so they're, they're discussing like consciousness and why you know, like you shouldn't have to have consciousness in quantum physics and philosophy, but this is Basil J. Hiley's big point too. It's like the consciousness, it's not like human consciousness. It's there, it's proto-consciousness of reality itself. And this, and this is what Roger Penrose says also. And so it's, 
I just find Jean Brimon really fascinating because he totally rejects the paranormal and Eastern philosophy and all this. But there's no mention of the ecological crisis, and there's no mention of um, this proto consciousness based on non commutativity mathematics. Does anybody have any? I got three people watching now. I'm discussing John Brumont's. Um, he gave a recent talk on YouTube. I just linked it. And I I, I don't agree with everything about him. I've corresponded with him. Any, does anybody want to chime in with any comments? I just wanted to get this out here because my cell phone wasn't working with the video, the camera on my cell phone. So I said, well, I'll just go live. Um, any comments about this, what I've been talking about? I, I can't really repeat everything but the thing is is like this whole idea of entropy like roger penrose he's the only person to point out that gravitational entropy is the opposite of the entropy of matter so when we when we do quantum physics we're we're relying on the entropy of matter but in fact this quantum potential field is actually a negative entropy as a time reverse signal and and life itself is based on neg what they call negentropy or negative entropy. And then um, Roger Penrose's claim is that well, actually, it's what gravity is is the collapse of the wave function, and so that's what um, creates relativity. And and but Basil J. Hiley's big point is that well, you don't even have to have any wave function. There's no reason to collapse the wave function because of non commutativity. You're using um, a the an anti commutator the with the Jordan's you're using the Jordan rule instead of the Born rule, and from Pasquale Jordan and so the the non commutativity can resonate in the into the macro scale and that's what meditation is it's it's non commutativity on the on the macro scale and this is the only only Eddie Oceans figured this out when he was invented the discipline of quantum psychology but then he got really upset because he tried to explain it to carl prebram and carl prebram could not understand the hello we've got four people watching or listening any comments about i'm talking about jean brumon's recent talk on youtube about his new book on statistical mechanics Woo, it sounds <laughs> riveting <laughs> but what makes it really interesting is he talks about the equilibrium principle in terms of quantum physics and how, okay, we lost one person. Okay, so any any comments or questions about this? I, I'm just trying to get this out here because, um, you know, I really agree with John Brimon because his point, he calls the Bohmian, um, David Bohm, he calls it the rational completion of quantum physics. And... And this is very much true, but the thing is, is that Basil J. Hiley is saying, well, actually, David Bohm, David Bohm's physics is non-commutative, and that's really the only way to understand Bohmian physics. And so, why isn't Professor Jean Brimon, you know, relying on on uh, Basil J. Hiley? And I think it has to do with this sort of like deep psychological blockage where they can't, like, as uh, math professor Alon Khan, he says, you know, most scientists, they cannot accept non-commutativity. Um, and because it's it's considered strange and a nuisance, because ever, you know, we, like, ever since we learn about, like, middle school mathematics, we learn the geometric continuum, but that's actually based on symmetry. So you have to assume there's this symmetric rest frame where you can put a particle in a box. And he even, and John Bermond in this recent talk, he, you know, he goes back to Newton. He's like, well, I'm, you know, we're, we're relying on Newton, but it's a proven fact that Newton got his um, inverse square law of gravity from um, music, music theory. And so it's like, this goes back, it goes back to music theory and non-commutativity. And only uh, Alain Kahn, he figured, you know, he figured this out about, Music theory and non commutativity. Yeah, the non commutative geometry is also called um, quantum algebra because the geometry, the the ratios as quantum algebra is before space time. So when they're doing the mathematics, it's actually a matrices algebra 
and then you have the inner cross products. So that if you look up any videos on the um, multiplying matrices, they'll they will explain that the when you multiply matrices, it's non-commutative. The the inner cross products are non-commutative, and so essentially you're like rearranging the vertical and the horizontal columns. You know, so even though you're saying like A times B and then B times A, they're not equal because when you multiply them with matrices, you're rearranging the horizontal and the horizontal and vertical, you know, columns. So essentially it's like the numbers become inherently geometrical. But but the real secret about it is that they're non-local, that that process is a non-local resonance of the time overlapping. So at every zero point of space-time, there already is what Roger Penrose calls fundamental time of the future and the past overlapping. And, and then his point is that the origin of the universe is, is asymmetric time, where it was highly neg negentropic or negative entropy. And then you can reconnect with this through, through biology, because life itself is due to negative entropy. And so you can like go into a deeper level of negative entropy, you know, even beyond physical death, you know, through really deep meditation, which of course nobody wants, you don't want to talk about that, you know. All right, does that kind of answer your question about the geometry? Because it's actually quantum algebra, but they call it non-commutative geometry. Because, see, the, the other thing is that it, the most people, they understand non-commutative geometry to be an extension of Riemannian, Re, Riemannian geometry in relativity. But it's actually not an extension. But Al Alain Kahn, he makes this big point that, yeah, sure. Alain Kahn, thanks for asking the question. Um, he, Alain Kahn, he's, he points out that Riemann, uh, Bernard Riemann, he, he realized that at the micro scale, his Riemannian geometry breaks down. And, and then um, Basil J. Hiley, he quotes Einstein stating that um, Einstein realized that actually, since there's no ether, it's actually this non-commutative quantum algebra and he and, and Einstein he has this quote where he says well we have to rely on the Heisenberg non-commutative matrices and when we do that there's no space-time continuum anymore it's gone and so this is this is um Jean Bermon he understands this he says you know Bell's inequality proves that there's no um symmetric rest frame and therefore quantum field theory has been has been debunked and he says that if you look at any quantum field theory textbook I, just, I don't know if i've never looked at one but he says like you know they don't study bell's inequality in terms of relativity you know they just ignore that whole problem and and so he said you know he said like even stephen hawking did not understand bell's inequality and so especially when we consider that the nobel prize was just you know in physics was due to bell's inequality this year then jean brumont's work becomes especially important because he's pointing out like if you really study Bell's inequality it's not against uh Bohmian physics at all it's not Bohmian physics it's not a hidden variable and th this is what um Basel J Hiley's big point too is all you're doing is you take you can just take the Schrodinger equation and you break down the the quaternion the um, complex mathematics into the real and imaginary components using polar um Radians, and when you use the polar radians, then you realize that the the imaginary component is inherently non-commutative, you know, and it's that it's due to that non-commutativity that you have this quantum potential. And then we, when you have the stern gerlach experiment, you're basically you're having a magnetic gradient. And and Professor Jean Brumoni does a great job in this recent talk explaining, you know, the stern gerlach experiment. But he's what's that? I like how it can be explained through music and scales, like you explain also how you talk about light not having the rest mass, but being the source of matter and mass. Yeah, that's another. I actually um, posted the uh, comment in this Jean Brumont video about because because uh, Jean Brumont is talking about if you try to put a particle in a box, then you have this inherent. Um, right. I know. And for me, the music stuff. Well, so that's why Alain Khan is so great because he says, like, he literally says music is the simplest way to explain this. 
and that's 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 awesome for me because that's I discovered this on my own through music, and so that's what got me into all of this. And then, but it, it also got me into meditation, and that's why that's why I find it really fascinating that John Bermond he he has you know he totally rejects the paranormal and Eastern philosophy. You know, he just thinks it's all. I mean, his whole point is like, well, we have to rely on science, and and in order to rely on science, we have to make a measurement, an external measurement. In order to make a, an external measurement, we have to assume that you put a particle in a box. <clears throat> and so once you assume you have to put a particle in a box, then you inherently have to rely on statistics because of this inherent uncertainty. Um, but the thing is, is like, you don't, you know, that's ignoring the ecological crisis because most people, most, you know, Westerners were like, well, yeah, science has worked. It's worked great. You know, math works. It's beautiful. It's based on symmetry. Yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, it works if you ignore the ecological crisis, you know, <laughs> which is, <laughs> and most, most, most physicists ignore the ecological crisis. You know, it's like, yeah, it's worked great. You know, uh, I mean, and okay. So now in terms of the music theory, the thing I, I mentioned the 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 article "Light is Heavy" by Professor uh, Gerard Nobel physicist Gerard de Hooft. I don't know how to pronounce mispronounce his name, his Dutch name, and then his co-author was Martin Vandermark, who's no longer alive. He he passed on a few years ago, but um, their their article is called "Light is Heavy," and their whole point is that light has gravitational mass. It it inherently has gravitational mass because you define the the momentum, even though light has a zero rest mass, the the mass is defined by the, the momentum because in quantum physics the momentum is due to the frequency. And that and then so that brings you right back to Louis de Broglie, um the what you know Penrose calls it the you know the de Broglie Einstein relation where you're saying that Energy equals frequency times Planck's Planck's constant, which you can think of as just like the average energy of light. And then you have, you know, the most famous equation of energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And so then you can just put the two together. That's the de Broglie-Einstein relation. Now, the thing is, is that um, uh, there's this other guy, John G. Williamson. He just he gave a talk on the Louis de Broglie's law of phase harmony. And he points out, yeah, it is non-commutative. You know, when you look at that, when you combine relativity with quantum physics, it's inherently non-commutative. But the thing about John G. Williamson is he completely rejects um, the Bell's inequality. And that's actually what got me to look up Jean Brimon again, because John G. Williamson, he's still stuck in this. He's trying to extend Maxwell's equations using quaternions. But he he will not accept that Bell's inequality is inherently non-local, and this is Basil J. Hiley's big point. He said most physicists they cannot accept non-locality; they just cannot deal with it. And because it's an, like as Professor John Bermond says, is the non-locality is actually the truth of reality. It's not just it's not some experimental setup that you have to artificially construct because that's how most people understand quantum entanglement. They say, well, look. You know, you have to artificially entangle the light, like two particles, like with, you know, like with a laser. And then that that entanglement is is broken it, as soon as you make a measurement, you know. But non-locality is not saying that. Non-locality is saying that you already have this eternal process that's inherently non-local before any measurement is made. And that's proven with the stern grillock experiment because it proves that the non-locality is spin where there's no magnetic field at all, you can change the um, you can change the stern gerlach um, magnetic gradient, <clears throat> but the particle itself has no magnetic field because you're using neutrons. And this is what my own professor worked with was with uh, neutrons, and you know doing that same. He set up that same experiment where actually he did an entangled uh, neutron, but it's the same concept. <clears throat> and um, so anyway, um, when you do that with the Bohmian model, you can actually prove that you don't have this instantaneous quantum jump or quantum leap, you know, that the people 
talk about in popular culture. Um, but actually, you have a, a torque as a quantum potential of the future and the past. You can actually measure it as a torque. And um, and uh, this is why Basil J. Hiley even compares it to the Coriola, Coriolis effect, you know, with the torque from the Earth spinning. The No, the, it's the transportation. In other words, the, the Stern-Gerlach apparatus is part of this quantum field. And so the, the spin is actually not... It's not tied to the particle. The spin is inherent to reality as non-locality. And this is Jean Brimon's big point, is that this was proven by Bell's inequality experiment. This is proven by the Stern-Gerlach experiment. You know, it, the Stern, you can do Bell's inequality using Stern-Gerlach. Uh, you know, he gets in all the statistics and all that. But, but Basil J. Hiley is saying, well, you don't even have to use statistics. You know, there's no, if you understand it in terms of, uh, non-commutativity, essentially, like the 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 uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle is position and momentum. But since momentum is directly proportional to frequency, you can actually just rely on the time and the frequency directly, you know. And that's where you get into the music theory. And so I came at this from music theory. It's like super simple um, concept in music theory. And of course, I can talk about music theory. I can do that, but it's like I'm trying to talk about Jean Brumont, you know, because I mean, he didn't like it. Like, if he recognized that Newton was relying on music theory for the inverse square law, but Newton was relying on, um, oh, he was relying on um, Architas, and Architas uh, had the wrong music theory. Like, this is because Architas ignored the non commutativity. And then it's only Alain Kahn in his field, his A Music of Shapes lecture that he explains, you know, the truth of music theory is actually non-commutativity. Because if you take the, the comma of Pythagoras, like if you look up the comma of Pythagoras, they'll, they'll make no mention of non-commutativity because they're just assuming you can have an a equal a symmetric division process of the, the difference between the perfect fifth and the octave you can just divide it back into itself and therefore you can just assume you already have a logarithmic equation. The only, the only way that can do that is by assuming the octave as, as a frequency of, of two is already squared, that it already has a squared value. So they're already assuming that you're, you're boxing in sound, you know, as a, as like the, the wave itself of sound is already, it's squared into a box, you know, which is very, <laughs> it's I'm sorry, I'm losing I got two people left. Who's the other person? <laughs> yeah, like if you I mean, like because we listen, we listen to sound, and that's what brings it back to consciousness. Like that, you know, Roger Penrose, I mean, he, you know, they've proven that the high like in my research, I, I found this tinnitus study where they showed that the the highest sound you can hear externally actually resonates the brain internally as ultrasound you know and then in the quantum uh, biology they've proven that the, the neurons the microtubules inside the neurons resonate from the ultrasound so you have this direct physical connection between meditation as internal listening and then resonating the ultrasound of the neurons and that being quantum coherence due to what they call super radiance of the tubulins inside the microtubules of the neurons. And so then with super radiance, what you're having is uh, acoustic phonons that are non-local due to this non-commutativity. So you're immediately, you're directly accessing the non-locality that's non-commutative and um, it's, and it's, it's impersonal. And so that's, just, this is, you know, John Bermond, he doesn't, He's like, there's no need to bring consciousness in quantum physics. And he's completely correct about that. And Basil J. Harley makes the same point. It's not pers personal consciousness that's, you know, like the whole Schrodinger cat paradox. Like, you know, there's not some like personal consciousness interacting with the collapse of the wave function when you make a quantum measurement. It's, but there is this proto consciousness that has information that's negative. It's active, what Basil J. Harley calls it active information because it's already there before you make any measurement it's already guiding you from the future 
And so he says, yeah, this can explain, you know, spiritual phenomenon, the paranormal. But Jean Bermon is saying, no, there's absolutely no way you can explain it. And the reason he's doing that is because he says, if you if you if you make a measurement, you have to assume that you're putting a particle in a box. And when you put a particle in a box as a position, therefore, you have to assume an uh, equilibrium as a symmetric measurement. And and that's that's why you have to use statistics, you know. And and so it's it's a fascinating um, difference between Professor Jean Bimon and Professor Basil J. Hiley. Now, Pro Professor Basil J. Hiley, he collaborated with David Bone. They co-wrote books together. So I think there's a good case to be made that Basil J. Hiley, you know, it's not it's. In terms of it being unmeasurable, see, the thing is, is you can do mathematics without actually um, making measurements. Like, if you know the frequency, and this is what Alain Kahn, his, in his talk, Music of Shapes, he uses the analogy of trying to communicate with extraterrestrials. And his point was like, see, the irony is, is that um, in terms of quantum biology, we already exist within, within light. And so the like, um, you know, like John G. Williamson, he's he's saying that, well, you know, you have to have relativity because since we we exist within light, then when it, whenever we make an external measurement, we are we are limited to the speed of light. But the thing is, is that in meditation, in meditation, you don't have to make an external measurement. You know, you can you, so so it's. You can still have light because if you are light, if your consciousness is light, you can you can observe different frequencies of light, you know. And and so this was Alain Khan's big point. It's like if you're just relying on the frequency of light and you're absorbing those different frequencies, then you could communicate with, you know, if aliens existed, you could communicate with them, you know, due to the non-commutativity. Um, so and it's you could say it's unmeasurable, but on the other hand, you could kind of say you can perceive it because if you can perceive light, you know, different frequencies of light based on the color. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for your questions and comments, Nathan, and have a good, good day. Take it easy. Bye-bye.